Welcome to episode 6 of the Think Wildlife Podcast. Today, I speak to Rasha from Future for Nature. Future for Nature is one of the largest conservation funding organizations in the world, supporting countless conservationists around the world with ambitious projects to save various species and their landscapes. So welcome, Rasha. It's a pleasure to have you on the podcast to talk about Future for Nature. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Can you talk a bit about Future for Nature Award and what it is? Yes, definitely. Um, So Future for Nature is a conservation funding organization that started already in 2008. And since that year, we give out awards to young conservationists all around the globe, actually, um, that, that make a difference for the species they work for or for the regions that they work in. Um, so, so we really believe in in these young people uh, that they can make a difference. Um, they often start from a passion for for a species, or they face some challenges in their region, and they want to make a difference. They want to change that. Uh, and often, the young people they have the guts to actually do brave things and and change the system. So that's why we support three of these young heroes every year. Um, so that's the award, and the award comes with. Uh, a monetary price of 50,000 euros each. So what are some of the biggest challenges you have observed that early stage conservationists faced while starting their own projects? Oh, that's a good question. Um, So over the years, we've seen many of them. Um, And I think one of the biggest challenges, looking back, that, that that I can see in these different projects is that uh, these people, they start working in conservation from a passion, from a de- determination to change things around. And this passion is, is their fuel they, that, that keeps them going, them going. But then when they dive into the problems or the situation a bit more and they learn a lot more, they also face uh, the complexity of these challenges and maybe the scale of these challenges. And they they still have this drive to change things, but then they also need to scale up their solutions and their, the, the way they work to make an impact. And this part of scaling up and building their organization or finding uh, proper funding to fund their activities, that's of, often a challenge. Um, and also when learning more about the situation locally, often there is also a lot of negativity. There's also things that do not go that well or that do not yield success. And those negative setbacks, they can also be a challenge for early conservationists to to overcome and to uh, stay strong in their motivation and determination to to keep going and make a difference. What are some things you look for in applications for the Future for Nature Award? Uh, So with the Future for Nature Award, we receive uh, hundreds of applications every year. And um, when we look through them, we, we do look for Uh, aspiring young leaders so people that show that they have this passion and determination that I mentioned before but also show that they can be this one individual that makes a change so that the one individual that can uh, take along other people in their mission to change things Um, and we are looking specifically for young people so we do not per se look at achievements that they have made already, but more also into uh, like future potential, whether they have a vision for the future and uh, an idea of how they want to reach this vision. So what are some of the other benefits of winning uh, the Future for Nature Award other than the monetary support? So personally, I think that winning the award is, uh, first of all, it's a recognition. It's a recognition of the work that a person is doing and um, when someone wins the award we will also invite them uh, to the Netherlands to attend their award ceremony and attending this event will mean that they get some training in how to present themselves how to present their project they will also meet a lot of people here in the Netherlands to build their network yes as you said also there will be the monetary support that they have this one this money will, will allow them to scale up their their impact to maybe make a start with building their organizations or starting a different sub-project that they feel is needed to to get closer to their goals. 
Um, and after winning the awards, all the winners are also added to a Future for Nature family. This is a, a network of all laureates of Future for Nature. We combine them in this community um, and we facilitate exchange of knowledge, exchange of ideas, but also just brainstorming together, uh, potentially also starting new projects together. Um, and Future for Nature facilitates this network both financially and non-financially, for example, by organizing workshops or uh, bringing them physically together um, to exchange ideas. So I think that's that's also a, an added benefit of winning the Future for Nature Award to become part of this network. So over the years, which have been some of your favorite projects supported by Future for Nature? Oh, that's a tricky question. Um, yes, I, I think I can honestly say I don't have a favorite project. Um, and that's because when, when the people win the award, we have seen their applications. We've maybe spoken to them a few times, but we don't really know the person and the project. Um, so this award will give them a boost um, and, and maybe also um, increase their motivation to continue. And then afterwards, when they are within this um, family of winners, that's when we get to know the people and the projects and when we get to see their progress. And I think I like that most when I, when I can see that these young winners really become the conservation leaders that they can be. Um, so so at, the, at the stage of winning, I mostly look at the species or the region and I can be happy, for example, when something unexpected wins. Um, this year, for example, we have someone working on plants. I really like that we have someone working on plants winning a conservation award because they're important too. And most often conservation money is going towards the, the bigger mammals. Uh, so I'm happy with that. Or for example, also in 2021, we had a small little hummingbird from Chile winning. Um, so I like that as well. Um, but then over the years, I like to see the progress. Um, so like I said, we started already in 2008 with handing out these awards. One of the first winners is uh, Patricia Medici. She's from Brazil. Back then, she just started her uh, lowland taper conservation initiative. And over the years, this has grown into uh, a big organization. Patricia has become a leading expert on taper conservation. She has managed to secure funds to build her organization and also build a very skilled team uh, with whom she's now working in all the different biomes in Brazil to protect the tapir. So that whole story, I think, makes me makes me like this project a lot. But there's more examples also from more recent winners. For example, um, Olivier Sengimana in Rwanda. He's working to protect the cranes, but he's also building his Rwanda Wildlife Conservation Association to protect more than cranes. So all of biodiversity in Rwanda. Um, and another example is Tiaja Adya from India. She's working with her fishing cat project to protect fishing cats, but also focusing on human wildlife interaction surrounding the wetlands where this fishing cat lives. So I cannot give you one favorite, but I do like to see the progress for all of our winners um, after winning the award. And is there any particular species taxa or landscape you are focusing on at Future for Nature? Um, no, we don't have any criteria regarding species or region or habitat. Uh, we do see in the applications that most of them will come from the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, so that's just an observation that we have. And um, automatically also most of our winners come from the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, and so you also founded the Future for Nature Academy. So what was the idea behind this? Yes, indeed. So in, in 2016, we started with the Future for Nature Academy. Um, and this was actually, the reason behind this was that the inspiration and the passion from the stories of the Future for Nature winners, we felt this, this must reach a younger audience even. So the Academy is mainly a student network that will... Um, yeah, that they will listen to the stories of the winners. And with the Academy, we try to inspire them and build their skills for themselves to become conservation leaders in the future. So what is your long-term vision for Future for Nature? 
future for nature in the future i think we um we will still want to award three conservation leaders every year uh, so we'll continue doing that um, but also we want to put more focus on this family this network of uh, future for nature winners um, we want to support that more to be able to increase the impact of each individual within this network, but also that together they can be stronger and perhaps in the future they can become like a voice for biodiversity on the global level. So how can individuals contribute to Future for Nature? Uh, I think individuals can contribute in lots of ways to Future for Nature. For example, just by, um, by being a conservationist yourself, because our overall mission is to protect biodiversity all over the world. So by doing that, in a way, in your personal life, you're already contributing. But to contribute directly to Future for Nature, I think it depends on your capacity and what you can contribute. For example, if you're a student, try to find ways to volunteer at the conservation project. Um, or if you are a working person, try to see whether your company is doing things sustainably. And if not, if you can change that, if you're a leader of a big company, uh, you can also look into ways of donating uh, to one of our projects or to Future for Nature directly. And then uh, we'll make sure that this money is well spent on the conservation issues that we we support all over the, the globe, that we help support solve them. How has Future for Nature been affected by COVID and uh, how have the projects coped with onslaught of COVID? Yes, I think COVID has affected everything around the globe. So also Future for Nature, um, one immediate effect or uh, direct effect was that, for example, we were not able to host the award show like we do every year. So for two years in a row, we organized the award show in a, in a digital way, which was nice for a change, but we're really happy that we are again in the position that we can do this in person because we feel these in-person connections between people uh, they make a lasting impact and that's how you grow friendships and grow connections that will actually lead to to impact so we're happy we can we can do the award event again in person and for all the different projects of our laureates um, it had impacts in in various ways some saw their sources of funding being stopped because those companies or organizations themselves were impacted by COVID. Others felt like that their communities that they work with, for example, they had different priorities during COVID, which is very understandable, but also had an impact on, um, on the conservation um, progress that they could have with their projects. Some have shifted their focus, therefore, um, for example, including human health into their projects. And in other aspects, we also saw some positive aspects because um, there was lack of traveling, of course, due to COVID. So uh, any potential negative effects, for example, from people visiting or from trafficking of um, specimens or parts of animals, uh, that was uh, reduced in some parts. Unfortunately, after COVID, that did pick up again, but there were definitely effects of of COVID all over, yes. Beyond COVID, what are some of the biggest challenges you face at Future for Network? So, yeah, beyond COVID and other pandemics that might come towards us, I think uh, one of the biggest challenges always in conservation is to find secure funding into the future. So that's the case for all of our winners, but also for Future for Nature itself. Um, and also what we'd like to do is create this bigger movement of people that see the value of biodiversity and want to work towards a future for nature. Um, and I think what we can do better in the future and what will be a challenge is to step up as a player in international uh, conservation to spread this word of uh, urgency at the moment for biodiversity protection. So talking about your own career, what has been your greatest learning from your conservation career? For my personal conservation career, I think one of the biggest things I've learned, and which is also one of the things that Future for Nature stands for, is that um, there is you can make a difference as an individual. So you can really stand up, 
believe in something, work hard to achieve that. Um, so there's this aspect of individuals making a difference, but then you can never do it alone. So yes, you need your passion and your perseverance and determination to get to a place where you can make a difference, but you shouldn't forget taking others with you um, and communicate about what you're doing and make sure that you um, move as a group towards the same goal. That is my final question for the interview. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you, Anish. It was a pleasure joining your podcast. Thank you.